like to build up the expectation. <laughs> hey, haven't we had a great meeting in the presence of God? And uh, I'm so glad that it's been such a, a great meeting because we're continuing our series on Authentic Church today. And um, today's subject really is about the awe-inspiring church. The awe-inspiring church. Authentic Church. Well, we've been looking at this because we've noticed that around the world there are things that are fake. We, we've all kind of had some fake friends and they've run out on us when we needed them. That's not very good. We, we, we've all seen the fake watches, the fake handbags, and we've come to understand something that if you want something that is authentic, then it's going to cost something. And we've been looking at the authentic church, the authentic church that truly worships God. Even when things aren't going our way, we still bring the sacrifice of praise to God. The authentic church that says, hey, it might cost something in time, but we are going to devote ourselves to the word of God, studying the word and applying its truth to our lives. We're going to be a disciple making church. That's really important. Authentic church is a community of faith, a people that come together and dare to believe that when we take the needs of earth to heaven, we can bring the blessing of God down. And as we pray in the name of Jesus, miracles happen and God hears and answers our prayers. And then last week, we had a great celebration. Hey, last week, I couldn't touch the wall because it was just filled uh, with so much food that you kindly donated and uh, we had our harvest thanksgiving and we learned last week that authentic church is a place where we rejoice yes. it's a place where joy is upon yes. our faces we we have thankful hearts for all that god has done for us and we're thankful for one another as well yes. and we rejoice when people bring their gift to the table I was rejoicing today as people were bringing their spiritual gifting to the table so that we could all be built up. The authentic church was a place where the presence of God was found. It was an awe-inspiring place. And we see in uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 43, a deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders remember as barry just rightly said these apostles were ordinary men that had been with jesus it was the lord working through them the lord working through them and amazing things happened when we think of the word awe or awesome it means a feeling of reverential respect mixed with fear and with wonder. It's an overwhelming feeling of reverence, admiration, fear, produced by that which is grand, something that is sublime, extremely powerful. And often when we talk about the awe uh, found in church, it's not because I'm a wonderful person or Devin's a great singer, although he is, um, it, it's because of God's presence amongst us you see Millpool can be an awe-inspiring place because of the presence of God amongst us if God wasn't amongst us we would just be like any other kind of social club uh, but there is something amazing about when the people of God come together we become an awesome congregation an awe-inspiring group of people because of the presence of God and so from the beginning of creation, God revealed himself to mankind. God revealed himself to mankind uh, in special ways, but he also revealed himself through creation itself. How many of you gazed out over an ocean and seen the sun rise or the sun set? And you see the amazing colours of God's palette. I like to paint, but, you know, I can never paint like that. God Almighty, the Creator, takes the paintbrush and he, he paints those beautiful colours for us. How many of you have gone through wood, wooded glades and, 
And you've seen the high pine trees and the, the wildlife and you think, wow, God, the creator, made all this. And you enjoy that. How many of you looked up at mountains or even flown over a mountain range on your way on to holiday maybe somewhere? And you look down and you just see the wonder of creation. And I think we've all seen on the news uh, pictures kind of televised from space of the earth. This beautiful earth that God created. The glory of God actually is all around us. It's just sometimes people just don't have eyes open to see it. And yet in Romans uh, chapter 1 verse 19 it says, They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. That's a powerful scripture. Hey, we need to tell people about Jesus, but ultimately this scripture says there's no excuse because God made this amazing world. It was created by God himself. No one can walk through the world and see all the majestic splendor of creation and kind of shrug their shoulders and say there is no God. They might try, but it's no excuse before the Almighty. God revealed himself in the Old Testament to the heroes of faith that we read about. God revealed his glory in the Old Testament. And that's why we should read the Old Testament as much as we read the New Testament. The whole Bible is the God-breathed, inspired word of God that will educate us and inform us and reveal to us the glory of God. God. Can someone say amen to that? The Bible is amazing. And in the Bible, we read about Abraham. We read about Abraham seeing the glory of God. Abraham ha had meetings with God. Abraham actually saw a kind of uh, uh, an image, as it were, of the Lord Jesus. He met a guy called Melchizedek, who was the outshining, a prophetic kind of look into the ministry of the Lord Jesus. It was Melchizedek. Uh, to whom he gave his tithes and offerings to. Just as you give your tithes and offerings, not to Richard Pitchley, but to God Almighty. And Melchizedek, the, the king of peace, blessed him. There is only one king of peace. His name is Jesus. And this amazing revelation of God was given to Abraham. And then we read about Moses. Moses is the man who sees the glory of God in the burning bush. The bush is on fire, but it's not being consumed. It's the fire of God that meets with Moses in the wilderness. And then we see uh, later on that Moses goes up on the mountain and, and the fire and the smoke and the lightning and the thunder and the presence of God is there on the mountain and Moses sees God. We read about Isaiah who went into the temple in the year that King Uzziah died and saw the amazing vision of God. Isaiah was the one who saw the celestial creatures calling out, saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. We read about Ezekiel, who saw images of God's glory, and, and hard to understand maybe, but he saw the images of God's glory, the vision of God. And what about Daniel in the Old Testament, who saw the throne with the one who is the Ancient of Days, and saw the glory of God. Hey friends, that is awesome. It really is. They saw the power and the majesty and the glory of God and they were awestruck in the presence of God. And then God revealed his glory to his people when he delivered them out of the land of Egypt. We read about the ten plagues. We read about and we heard in the prophetic that God opens the water for us. God opened up the Red Sea and the people of God were miraculously set free from the oppression of the Egyptians. We see in the Old Testament that God manifested his glory to his people. They saw a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. The presence of God was with 
his people. Amen. The God of Jacob is with us, the psalmist said. And they saw the glory of the Lord. Uh, and then they also stood back from afar as the glory of God came down on the holy mountain where Moses was meeting with God. Uh, they were standing in awe, in reverence, uh, and almost fear, trembling in the presence of a holy, majestic God. Our God is an awesome God. And so, in the Old Testament, the people of God, at times, saw the glory and the manifestation of God's Shekinah, his outshining beauty and holiness. And then, and then, if that wasn't awesome enough, then Jesus came. And when Jesus came into our world, I want to tell you, friends, that was awesome off the charts. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that was well off the charts yes. in awe yes. and splendor and majesty yes. when the king yes. of kings yes. laid aside yes. his royal robes yes. and he came into our world. Yes. The incarnation may be hard for some people to grasp that God should come and become and found like one of us. John said in his gospel, the word, that's Jesus, that's God, became flesh. God put the glory of his majesty, as it were, to one side. He took off those regal robes of eternal majesty. And he clothed himself with the bones and the muscle and the skin and the flesh of a human. The King of Glory, who was conceived miraculously by the Holy Spirit, came through the birth canal of a woman that God chose. The world was about to see the glory of God off the charts in the life of Jesus Christ. I tell you, when you read the Gospels, you will read there the words of Jesus. How he taught with such wisdom. How he brought the kingdom of God into our world. How he spoke the wonderful truths of heaven to us. Drawing men, drawing women, drawing boys and girls to come close to God Almighty through his words. Never a man spake like Christ, it says in the Bible. His words are awesome and they're off the charts. His miracles are awe-inspiring. Hey, Jesus just took a little picnic lunch from a small boy who gladly gave it to him. And when he'd given thanks, he fed thousands of people with a handful of food. Jesus calmed the storm. Jesus took hold of some water and he turned it into the best wine. Jesus did miracle upon miracle upon miracle upon miracle. And when John was writing as fast as he could as the Holy Spirit was helping him and inspiring him. John said, listen, that Jesus did so many things. If we, if we could possibly write them all down, there wouldn't be a library big enough in the world to contain all these amazing things about Jesus. But these things are written that you might believe. And in believing in the Son of God, you might have everlasting life. And I'm glad I've read and believed many years ago and found life in Jesus. You see, when Jesus came, awe went off the charts because it was so glorious. When Jesus came, he brought the word of the Lord to us. When Jesus came, he brought miracles into the communities he ministered into. When Jesus came, he healed the sick. There was nobody that was so sick Jesus couldn't heal. And people would look and think, that, oh, this is too hard. But Jesus was able to heal everybody that came to him, yes. looking to him in faith. 
And sometimes, you know, uh, there was one time when a, 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 a man came to Jesus and he said, listen, my servant is ill and he's desperately sick, but you don't need to come to my house. You don't need to walk any further. You don't need to trouble yourself. Just speak the word and he will be made well. And Jesus said, wow. He said, I've not seen faith like this anywhere. And Jesus spoke the word. And at a distance, Jesus healed that man's servant. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus stirred lives. And he gave a sense of awe in the hearts of men. There was nobody <coughs> like Jesus. Awesome went off the charts when Jesus came to our world. He healed people. He did miracles. He yeah. spoke the word of life. Yeah. He delivered people. Yeah. Yeah. He set people free from dark powers. Yeah. There was no demon. There was no foul spirit from hell that could stand against the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus spoke the word and demons had to flee. Hey, there was even a guy that had a thousand demons in him, wrecking his life. But those thousand demons were no trouble to Jesus. Jesus said, go, and they went. The and Lord. the same Lord Jesus today can heal. The same Lord Jesus today can set people free. Whatever your addiction is, yeah. he can set yeah. you free. Yeah. Whatever darkness you find yourself in, you need to know that Jesus is the light yeah. of the world. Yeah. And he can cast that darkness out yeah. and give you the light of life. Yeah. There is nothing too hard for the Lord Jesus. And as you get to know Jesus in a personal way, you, you sense the awe of his presence. You see, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same Jesus. He's the same Jesus. He's the same Jesus that opened the eyes of the blind yesterday. He's the same Jesus that's here today. And he loves you. Sometimes we're so busy, so full of our problems, so full of our anxieties, we, we forget that God loves us. And that's why God interrupted the message. So he'd be the meeting earlier and said, you need to know that you're loved. And then Jesus, he did some incredible things, but I guess, can you imagine the awe? Can you imagine the reverential fear if you stood outside a house where a, a little girl of 12 years of age had died and everybody's weeping and Jesus goes in and he, he says, wake up little girl and she comes back to life again. Can you imagine the reverential fear and the awe that the village of Nan had? This little village of Nan. There was a widow lady there. And this widow lady had lost her husband and that was devastating. And then now her son had died. She'd lost everything. Can you imagine the emotion, the brokenness that lady was facing? The pain, the anguish, the grief, the lament. And as they carried the body of this dead lad towards the place of burial as they took death to a place of sadness coldness and darkness as they carried death to that place life was coming the other way and when life met death something awesome happened death had to give way to life and in Jesus there is everlasting life and Jesus touched that lad and he came back to life. Can you imagine it? Wow. I don't know what those people said or did after that. But I think for me I would have fallen to my knees in fear of God Almighty. To see a lad brought back from the dead like that. And what about those people at the tomb of Lazarus? 
when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. Our God is an awesome God. Our Jesus is awe-inspiring. And at Millpool Hill Church, we believe all this stuff. It's not stories. It's true life accounts of people that lived and were as real as you and I today. And all this has been preserved in Holy Scripture, the Bible, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And when we read these things, it does something to me. It makes me, makes me stand in the fear of God. God. God is holy. He's my father. He's Abba. But he's holy. He's not my mate. He's my Lord and my God. He is Abba, my Father in heaven. I stand in awe of him. And then Jesus went to the cross. And he paid the price for every one of us to be reconnected to God. Our sin separated us from God. We couldn't pay the price for sin because it was death. And it didn't matter how religious man was. It didn't matter how generous man was with his money. It didn't matter how much time people spent in synagogues. None of that stuff really mattered because it was religion. And it couldn't pay the price for mankind's sin. And so God had to leave heaven and come into our sin-sick world. And as the perfect person, as God Almighty, died on the cross so that we could be forgiven and reconnected to him. If that isn't awesome, I don't know what is. Our God is an awesome God. And then, on the third day, just as he said he would, he rose from the dead. Jesus died for our sins. Jesus rose for our justification. Jesus ascended into glory. Jesus will come back again. Can you say amen to that? Praise the Lord. Hey, let's just take a little praise break. Devin, get on piano. But let's just stand in the presence of God. Let's just sing. Majesty, worship. His majesty unto Jesus be glory, honor, and praise. Come on, let's let's take a praise break. nearly finished you see the awesome presence of God through the Old Testament and then into the Gospels with the coming of Jesus just inspired the awesome presence of God is something that God wants to reveal to the people of faith something that he wants to share with his people and we've seen in the Old Testament God moving and doing amazing things, revealing his glory. And then when Jesus came, the people saw the glory of God in the person of God's Son, the Lord Jesus. And now Jesus has died and he is about to go to heaven. But Jesus says to his disciples, I want you guys to wait here yes. yeah. until the promise of the Father. 
And so Jesus ascends into the glory of heaven. And the angels say, why are you looking up there? This same Lord Jesus that you've seen go that way will one day come back yeah. again that way. Yeah. Yeah. And the disciples go back to a room. It's an upper room. They're praying. They're seeking the face of God. They are hungry yeah. for God. Yeah. They are hungry yeah. for the promise yeah. of the Father, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And then on the day of Pentecost, something awesome <laughs> happens. There is a mighty wind from Hallelujah. heaven. And that wind from heaven swirls around a room, maybe the size of a room like this. And as that wind comes into the room, something miraculous happens. You see the glory of the Lord is in the wind. The wind is the very Ruach, the breath of God Almighty. And that wind, that breath comes upon people and fills their very lungs with the presence of God and the glory of God. And then as they're looking around, they can see what looks like to be little tongues of fire. The fire, the glory, the presence of God resting upon every one of them. Every one of them received. You got that? Every one of them in that room received. The breath of God came upon them. The fire of God came upon them. And then they began to praise God. They began to sing and they began to praise yes. and they began to speak out other languages yes. that they'd never learned yes. before. Yes. Languages that bypass their human intellect. Yes. Languages of heaven. Languages of men. Yes. They began to praise the Lord like never Amen. before. And that room could not contain the church. Amen. Awesome yes. had come to the church of Jesus Christ. Yes. And they burst out of that room. Yes. And a man who had denied Jesus suddenly stood up a guy called Peter filled with the anointing and the presence of God and he preached the first gospel message and 3,000 people heard the good news about Jesus and they got saved isn't that awesome and the birth of the church took place and here's the thing friends Although the book of Acts has been written, and I don't have time today to go through chapter after chapter of all the awesome things that God did through his people, but it's there for you on record. Read it yourself. But in Acts chapter 28, we kind of flick the page and we go and then into Romans. But in Acts chapter 28, you need to know something. Our God is an awesome God. And we are the people of God today. We are the church of Jesus Christ. And I want to suggest today that we're in Acts chapter 29. And maybe even more because God is still working amongst his people. And Neil Paul Hill Church, like every other local church around the globe, can be an awe-inspiring congregation. Why? Because the presence of God is with man. And when we come together, Jesus said, if two or three of you are gathered together in my name, there I will be in the midst of you. Jesus is here at Millpool Hill Church. He is the exalted King of glory. He is the one who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And friends, we are living in the today. And the power of God is real right now. We can know the awesome power of God amongst us. And so I'm going to finish. The time's gone. But this can be a now moment for you. You see the same Lord Jesus that brought that awesome authority of heaven into the world is here right now. Amen. Devin, get on the piano, please. We're going to worship the Lord again. We're going to sing that song, Majesty. It might be an old song that was written in the 80s, but Jesus is still the King. He's still the Lord of Lords, and He is here today. And this is the moment now. In the meeting, if you believe that God is here, if you are looking for a miracle, if you are looking for a healing, if you are looking for a breakthrough, if you are looking for something that only heaven can give you, as we worship, at the end of this meeting, why don't you experience for yourself the awesome power of God? As we stand and worship, if you're looking for a miracle and healing, if you're looking for a touch from God today, here's what I want you to do. I want you to reach out and touch the Lord and, and do it by faith. But if it helps you, 
to have someone just quietly pray for you, for your miracle in the name of Jesus. Then leave your chair and come and stand at the front. And we will pray for you whilst we're worshipping. Whilst we're standing in the presence of an awe-inspiring God. Here's your chance. Let's stand. I'm not going to ask again. If you want that miracle, if you want that healing, then you leave your chair and you stand at the front in faith. This is a now moment in God. This is the today moment. Thank you, Devin.